Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and I would suggest that you try being a space tyrant. It even moves its giant hands. Yes, indeed. Galactic domination. Sound like it might be up your alley. Well, this particular title, which happens to be an early access at the moment. I know I'm covering an early access game. Yeah. I don't see a reason why not in this more casual suggestion series. So, yeah. In its current state, it's definitely worth a play. It'll certainly be better on launch, I would hope. But this is a light 4X. I said a space strategy 4X. I never remember the 4Xs. Explore, expand, exploit, exterminate. Nailed it for once. Yes. It could be described by the fairly old term that probably only Americans are going to get called beer and pretzels. Something that's not a game which is going to require a huge amount of in-depth thought, but it still gives you the taste of strategy, and you'd be surprised how many people find that valuable. I've mentioned time and again about the idea of big esports professional gamers playing stuff like Clash Royale on their phones, and some people were horrified by the notion, how dare you play something more casual and less competitive? We all need a break, and some of us need a, just a little taste of what we like. We not everything has to be 100% on all the time, 100% intense, 100% hardcore. Now, this game in particular is dripping in cool theme. And I'll say, I'll say this, if you used to watch a lot of 90s cartoons, particularly Bucky O'Hare, then I think you might very well be into this. Let me show you why. So we're going to dive into this and show you what's going on. So it's a bit of a mixture of a turn-based 4X strategy game with a real-time battle system and a bit of a card system in there, along with persistent account level progression. Now, this is a full-on buy and play game. It's no free-to-play nonsense here. And you'll see what's going on as we look at it. So we have a, a fairly simple 4X expansion game here. And you are able to deploy fleets. You are able to recruit leaders for your fleets, all which have different abilities. And you are able to add new ships to your fleets and expand them get research in order to upgrade different ships and also collect these cards that can be powered by crystals in your empire that allow you to play them and have a wide variety of different effects. I could really use some extra cash. Let's play Titan the Grip and that will allow us to do just that. So in terms of research, I've researched quite a lot of nice stuff. You will notice that the Hoplites, who are space evil space bunnies basically, they lack the creativity of other empires so they don't get a third research option. But I might get wide bays for more fighter squadrons or tactical volley. That might be nice. So if I place these destroyers next to other destroyers, they have a chance of also firing additional volleys in combat. So if we look at what we have here, it's looking pretty good. But as an evil space tyrant, I need to dominate this part of the galaxy. But there is a adversary in the form of the Senate. And you are not the Senate. You would like to be the Senate, but you are not. And you're going to have to deal with that. You need to capture worlds and blast ships to raise your tyranny level. But unrest generated by the goody two-shoe Senate, who will ally with various planets and come up with various schemes against you, well, they're going to throw a spanner in the works, as it were. Well, let's see what we want to do. I think you want to permanently increase the output of this world. It sucks at the moment. Various worlds have various modifiers. As you can see, affixes and suffixes. This is a poor growing city world. But I'm upgrading it and it's getting a little bit better. It's getting a little bit better and it's going to generate a little bit more every turn. This is one of my fleets led by my grand leader, Stonehair, who can hurl meteors at people. Shipyard will allow me to add some additional ships. I have some upgraded destroyers, so maybe if I put three destroyers together, that might be a pretty good idea. There we go. I have a bigger fleet now and I can go and attack this vulnerable asteroid group and fight against this little squadron here. So the combat is nice and quick and simple, but it does have a little bit of tactical decision making to do, which is good because the problem with some of these more simplistic games is that often they don't focus on that and they take away interesting decisions. You can make a simple game that still has a bunch of interesting decisions in it. This one does. To start with, you get a selection of random tactics. So I could get reinforcements here. I could get withdraw to pull a damage ship out of the battle or I could stun a ship for 20 seconds, which sounds great because they have a nasty slug cruiser in the middle air with its party ball. These are 
literally space slug DJs. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to pull out that tactic and I'm going to stun that ship in the middle there. So we have tactical volley now available, which means that multiple destroyers are opening fire. I have meteor swarm available and it's all sort of based on this energy charging system here. So I can spend the energy in order to activate these and placing different ships next to other ships with upgrades is often a big tactical choice. And you see how, you know, how quickly that went. And you could even accelerate it faster than that, too. So I'm going to explore the planet. This was an undefended planet. Usually a planet that has defense strength, you have to roll the dice again. So it's a little bit like a board game. And you can catch a barracks in order to earn additional dice. You can also play cards to modify the roll of the dice and weaken defenses. And you'll always get a little event to choose from. So in this case, Asteroid Fields Forever. Unable to track all the debris in the system, you receive no warning as asteroids begin slamming your fleet. Each moment brings more damage. Do I endure it or do I punch the engines? You know what? I'm going to take the hits. Asteroid storms are a fact of life. We did lose a ship, though. But it does mean that our fleet stays there, which is actually quite important. If it ran backwards, then it would take longer to take control of these areas here. Now, my Marine took, you know, they took a bit of a beating, but I actually have a card that is going to potentially add a carrier to my fleet. I'm thinking that's probably a good idea. But I also have another fleet up here that has a Dreadnought in it that's taking a little bit of a beating. So maybe I just want to add it to that fleet instead. I actually don't have the space. So as you level up, you're allowed more ships in your fleet, which is kind of neat. I unfortunately made a mistake here by putting it here. But you know, I'm going to recycle the cruiser and keep the carrier. Anything that you can't fit goes into surplus and then you have to sell it, which is a little awkward. I, I lost a ship there that I didn't really want to lose, but it is what it is. That was my own mistake. I have a much larger fleet capacity with my more leveled up general here. So what else do you do? Well, I mean, that's pretty much a turn. It's really that simple. So these are the goals of this particular mission. This is the tyranny meter. Once you've spent all your resources, it very handily lets you click through here and tells you what you can still do. So I could go to the shipyard and scrap a ship, but I have no real reason to do that. So I'm not going to. The asteroids don't have a shipyard on them. So... You click this and it just means, all right, that's the turn done. So the meter's going to go down because of unrest. The agitators over here, those damn agitators, are generating unrest for me. So I really should go and deal with that before it gets out of hand. So you get a new card when you skip your turn. And you can see this is very, very well defended. I might want to do something about that. A plague bomb might fix that issue quite nicely, wouldn't it? Yes. If you are feeling like an evil space tyrant at this point, that's again because the game is dripping in theme. Something that you'd often kind of describe a board game as rather than a video game. Theme for video games is maybe a little less important. Simply and I actually can't go that way because the space lanes don't take me that way yet, but it's just a little... It's a little more obvious in a video game as to what the theme is because you kind of see it and you don't necessarily have to justify the game mechanics in the same way that you do in a board game. But this one really does have, like I said, a lot of really cool theme and I think that just makes the game more fun to play because you get that little role play aspect of playing an evil space tyrant from the 90s cartoons. I'm going to deploy my dreadnought here along with a carrier boarding party to fight this small fleet of frigates. I think I should be just fine. These guys have a commander power that allows them to activate a geo shield. I don't want that because these are small ships. I don't want to do that at all. Maybe I can summon some temporary frigate reinforcements. There we go and it takes a little long to charge its death ray, but once it does, it's going to do some serious damage. I'm going to apply a shield to this. And what you might also notice is hull, there's a hull breach mechanic. So while your hull is breached, you'll take constant damage and you can't charge up your ability. So you see the death ray just obliterated a ship there. The geo burst, that death star-like laser will easily cut through what remains of this fleet. Just nice and quick, you know? Still some decisions to make. You may come up against some harder fleet battles, but... Nice and quick and speed. Frankly, that's becoming more valuable as of late. Being able to get just a little taste of an experience rather than something that takes an awful lot of work isn't really a bad idea necessarily. Now, I really need to reinforce this fleet. So I'm thinking a few more destroyers and we'll put some cruisers together as well. There we go. Spend some cash on that. That fleet's a little more dangerous and 
We can't head in that direction just yet. It's a very, it's actually not that even that desirable. It's a ruined, poor city. I don't even need that. What I do need to do is shut down these ah, nasty little Senate planets. May take the asteroids out. They re they really have no value, as I said, other than the location, as it says. But I would really like, if I could, to grab this research lab so I can get even more breakthroughs. We're fighting another space rabbit force, or rebel space rabbit force, by the looks of it. All large ships do double damage. I like that. Here we go. Activate the protection shields and tactical volleys on all ships. Activate heavy hitters. Uh, they do as much damage as we possibly can. We might lose a few destroyers, but look at all those torpedoes. Volleys of torpedoes. These are heavily upgraded cruisers, so they're able to do a lot of damage. I think you're getting the point of this, right? Quite simple. You expand. You play cards. You attack. You invade by rolling dice, you gain additional dice by capturing barracks, you get more upgrades, and as I said, there are those persistent upgrades. They're called artifacts, and you can actually load out your commander with different artifacts that give him different abilities as he goes into each mission. I want to become the god emperor of the gigantic natives, of course. Yes, they are, I am their deity now, and I am given a card as a result of that. I can allow a planet to be sieged again if I want, so if I were to bombard a tough planet, that would be... Just a little easier. I was thinking about this tough planet here. I'm thinking maybe we just plague bomb it, but I could show you invasion. It's actually just really easy. You just roll some dice. Simple as that. Nothing too complicated. Obviously, that might be disappointing for people that want a little bit more depth in invading, but this is supposed to be a fast game. The speed is the point. So if you don't have that, well, it kind of defeats the point of the exercise, really, doesn't it? Which is maybe not so great. Maybe want to add a few destroyers or an extra cruiser to the mix. We don't have the money for that right now, but we certainly will next turn. We even have some militia who are now guarding this area. So we have yet another leader. Now, the death ray is ready to fire. I can spend this, and you know what? It would be really nice if this didn't have a fleet anymore. Oh, I love how it just points it. It's, it's so cool. It's so very, very awesome the way that this particular game expresses its theme and layers on all the 90s cartoon stuff. This is a good place to recruit commanders, yes. The worst that the galaxy has to offer. My hand size has exceeded, so I need to just tell something. I think we'll get rid of renewed assault, probably won't need that. And that is pretty much that. Now, this is very much a single player game. The point of the fact is that there is supposed to be that asymmetry between the Space Tyrant and the Senate trying to oppose the Space Tyrant. So it, it it does make perfect amount of sense for that asymmetry to be there and for there not to be that multiplayer functionality that you maybe might otherwise expect in a game like this. We're ready to go. I really do need to hit that. That needs to go away. It's getting worse and worse every time. It's going to take a while for me to get there, but I can get there and I should be able to wipe them out pretty quickly. These are actually relatively tough ships, but I'm not too worried. Power up, max out that energy meter right now and fire with everything we have. Annihilate them with the Geo Burst. Activate our shields. Easily wipe that fleet out. Something quite nice about 15 second battles, you know. You get a lot done in a short period of time. This is a lunch break game, I think. It's a good way to describe it. Something you can very quickly get done in a short period of time. I'm really liking this so far, and there's a lot more to be added. They're adding more races, they're adding more campaigns. There's quite a few campaigns already in it, so there's quite a lot of content for you to face off against. And it gets increasingly difficult. The tutorials are videos, but there is a tutorial mission which sort of contextualizes the videos, which does make it a little bit better, I think. So, it's not a huge problem. I'm going to oppress. You can use a fleet to oppress the lab to generate more resources. So if you need more resources from a particular place, you can do that. You know what I can do? I can get a free technology by permanently removing siege value from that. So I think we're going to uh, put reaction thrusters there. And I've actually disarmed the barracks. That's an additional effect. So they're way weaker now. We actually lost one of our dice for it. But you know what? Maybe it was worth it for an extra tech. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a damn terrible idea. We could use some more crystals as well, frankly. This is a really cool little game. I'm very glad that I stumbled across it. We almost didn't. And that, I think, demonstrates 
one of the biggest problems that currently exists with Steam. There are so many games coming out every week that even people whose jobs it is to find good games aren't necessarily finding them. That is not a good thing at all. We're doing our best to try and keep up with it, but God, how can you possibly? We almost missed this because the person that was doing our list for the Co-Optional Podcast overlooked it. Thankfully, I didn't, and I've enjoyed my time so far a great deal with this particular title. There's some work still to be done, of course, and if you're avoiding early access games, I certainly don't blame you. There's nothing wrong with waiting. I mean, there's plenty to play right now. It's always going to be a better product by the time that you actually get to play it in its real, complete version. Assuming you can honestly really say that such a thing exists anymore, and I don't think it really does in the land of digital distribution. Well, we're finally clear these bastards out of the way, and maybe we might just plague bomb them. That might be... A pretty good idea, don't you think? I think wiping these galleys out shouldn't be too challenging at all. Yeah, kind of like that. Send in the boarding parties and take over. Didn't even get there. <laughs> it's definitely an easy mission, but it does get a lot harder later on. Oh, yes. Plague. Delicious plague. If I were to add anything, I'd maybe, like, increase the uh, fidelity of the effects on using some of these cards. Because a lot of them are fairly generic. I would just love to see them raining down actual green plague bombs. I love the font choices. And the aesthetic is absolutely fantastic. But there's definitely some improvements that could be made in that respect. I do just love the fact that we just nuked that out of existence. It all just feels like being an evil overlord. And that level of immersion matters more than a lot of people like to admit, I think. This is really awesome. It's called Space Tyrant. And you should probably give it a shot. I suggest you do. If you're looking for a light, quick, and easy to learn 4X experience with some nice, persistent progression, loadouts, and a little bit of a card mechanic thrown in there for good measure. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, by all means, do feel free to click the like button. If not, the dislike button is right over there. And the discussion thread for this game is over on our official subreddit. I've thrown it down in the comment section below. I'll see you next time.